If you feel like there's an imbalance in your workplace about who has to work over the holidays and who doesn't, you're not alone. In a qualitative study out of York University, employees without children say their work-life balance is not taken into consideration. And it is for colleagues who have kids. Galina Boyarinsaba is the author of that study, and she joins us now from Las Vegas. So first off, tell us what your research found. Hello. Um, well, when we talk about work-life balance, the most prevalent assumption is that it's really an issue for people with children. By entertaining this assumption, what we're doing as a society, we're seeing that people without children either don't face the difficulty with work-life balance, or it's not enough to warrant employers' attention. And this is very surprising considering the statistics. When we're seeing the statistics, we are observing that half of our Canadian population is really couples without children. So we're seeing in 2016 that we have 51.1% of couples with children versus 48.9% of couples without children. We're also seeing the increased rate of couples without children at 7.2% versus 2.2% of couples with children. So what my study really found that the emergent pattern is that people without children are penalized with more longer working hours as well as less flexibility because their needs are not really taken into consideration. Are there numbers to back this or is it more anecdotal that you're hearing from employees without children? Well, given that I have a qualitative study and it's not quanti quantitative, I don't have the numbers to back it up. But the statistics and the popular media are talking about employees feeling disadvantaged. What are some of the concerns you're hearing from those uh, employees without children? Well, one of the most important concerns that we're hearing is that when people without children join the organizations, they feel that they perceive to be career oriented. They're always available, they're always able to pick up the shift, to work extra time, and to work for those who are with children, who have to take care of their children. And they feel that they are treated unfairly. That's, that's the major concern. So if they're, they feel they're being treated unfairly, is there a way that they can address this with their employers without feeling like they're going to be uh, penalized for it? Um, th this is a very interesting question because uh, a lot of my participants, when we're interviewed, when I asked them, well, why don't you voice your concern to your employers? And a lot of them felt that their concerns don't have the legitimacy to them. Because when people with children come up to their manager, say that they have to leave at 4 p.m., it's expected that they're going to hear yes, because they have to pick up their child from daycare. Employees without children felt that saying that I need to go take my dog to the vet or I have a social commitment wasn't the legitimate enough reason. And they felt that they can't voice their concerns without being, but without there being any repercussions. Now, you're a parent yourself. Did your findings come as a surprise to you? Um, I can definitely see the difference as a parent right now. Um, I feel that when I need to attend to my daughter's needs, I need to go to recitals or I need to leave work earlier, I feel a lot more free to ask for that time. When before, I couldn't have done that. But also as an HR professional, I worked in a corporation before. Uh, reflecting back on it, I never had employees come up to me saying, well, I, I need to leave because I have a social commitment. Um, and they always had some sort of a reason. And my participants confirmed it by saying that they often feel they need to lie to their managers by saying they have commitments with their nephews or nieces. That's interesting. So, now, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very surprising finding. Yeah, absolutely. Now, in your paper, you also argue that work-life balance policies haven't kept up with social trends. So what might some of those be? Yeah. Well, a lot of the, the... Why are we seeing so many more couples delaying childbirth, having children, or foregoing having children? We're seeing a lot of women entering the professional occupations and staying in them. And while building their career delaying the childbirth. We're also seeing a lot of couples cohabitating together without getting married and without having children. And because of the economic situation and difficulty of buying a house, a lot of couples, again, delay or forego parenthood. So those changes 
coupled with the statistics that we're seeing, suggests that more and more individuals without children are entering organizations.